Good day, my name is Kabir Pirbai and I will be presenting to you the circulating atmosphere. The contents of my presentation will include the introduction and concept of atmospheric circulations, the single cell circulation model, as well as the three cell circulation model. I will also be presenting the importance of these models towards our habitable planet. Atmospheric circulations refer to a large-scale movement of air on the surface of the Earth and also the means by which thermal energy is distributed across the Earth's surface. So, not only do atmospheric circulations redistribute heat, but it also helps keep the planet cooler. Like the ocean, the Earth behaves like a fluid when heated. When heated, a fluid becomes less dense and rises. When cooled, a fluid becomes more dense and falls. However, air is heated by the surface of the earth and not the sun. The simple concept give, gives rise to the Hadley circulation or the single cell circulation model. Here, the sun's rays are less spread out at the equatorial regions than higher latitude regions. At the equator, Air near the surface is warmed. It expands and begins to rise. So let's take a closer look at the single cell circulation model. As the air is warmed near the surface of the equator, it rises and moves away from the equator. It eventually becomes driven towards the poles and begins to cool. The air then creates an overturning circulation, displacing the cold, dense air. So, cold and dense air at the poles begins to sink and starts to flow towards the equator, replacing the warm air that's rising in this region. This simple model of circulation suggests we get winds going straight between the poles and the equator. However, in reality, we see that the winds turn away from, their from this predicted path. This can be accounted for by the Earth's rotation, known as the Coriolis effect. The main cause of the Coriolis effect is the Earth's rotation. So as the Earth spins in a counterclockwise direction on its axis, anything flying or flowing over a long distance above its surface is deflected. Objects are deflected to the right in the northern hemisphere and left in the southern. For example, this diagram illustrates that if we had to shoot a projectile from the equator towards the North Pole, the expected path would be, for example, in this case, the cannonball to reach the North Pole. However, the actual path of the ball would be somewhere near Eurasia. And as you can see, the deflection from the expected part to the actual part is accounted for by the rotation of the Earth. So, the three-cell circulation now takes into account the Coriolis effect. So, the three-cell model best describes the Earth's general circulation pattern because it considers the Coriolis force due to the rotation of the Earth. In this circulation model, the northern and southern hemisphere are each divided into three cells of circulation, which are marked by the equator, 30 degrees north and south, and 60 degrees north and south. These cells are termed the Hadley, Ferrell, and Polar cells. So let's take a closer look of what this three-celled model entails. Here, as we know, the sun's rays are concentrated along the equator. And at the equator, air near the surface is warmed. It expands and begins to rise. As the air rises and moves away from the equator, it cools. So, at about 30 degrees north or south of the equator, the now cooler and denser air sinks back towards the Earth's surface. Some of the air flows back towards the equator, and some towards the poles. At about 60 degrees north or south, the air flowing towards the poles collides with cold air moving away from the poles. 
the collision of these two air currents force air upwards where it moves back towards the poles and the mid latitudes. And this simple or three celled model gives rise to the cells known as the Hadley, Feral, and Polar cell, respectively. The Hadley cell is the stronger of the three cells as the more warm air is near the equator. And remember, the feral cell is more like a forced effect due to the air moving towards the poles colliding with the air moving away from the poles. So now that we have an understanding of the two key cells modeling atmospheric circulations, what are the importance of the circulating atmosphere towards our habitable planet? Firstly, it dictates our climatic conditions. The pattern of circulation gives rise to differences in rainfall at different latitudes, weather as well as se seasonal traits. So atmospheric circulations determine the geographical distribution of phenomena on the Earth's surface. And we need to have a more comprehensive understanding of the function of the Earth. So, for example, as air rises, it loses its capacity to hold moisture. As a result, rainfall is highest at latitudes where air rises. These differences in heat and moisture determine the distribution of the Earth's biomes. For instance, rainforests are found at the equator and evergreen forests around 60 degrees north and south, as well as deserts around 30 degrees north and south. You can see the drier regions are between the equator and 60 degrees north of the equator. So, these atmospheric circulations determine the weather we experience on a day-to-day -day basis, making certain places more habitable than others. To conclude, unequal heating is the main driving mechanism responsible for Earth's atmospheric circulations, as the equator receives more heat than that of the poles. The three-celled model is the most robust as the single-celled model fail to take into account the Coriolis effect, which is as a result of the rotation of the Earth. Modeling the characteristics and functions of the Earth's atmosphere is important because it has a direct impact on the Earth's biomes. With the potential of climate change to significantly exacerbate the problems associated with the Earth's atmosphere, modeling the characteristics and extent of these circulations will only enhance our understanding to promote a cleaner and healthier planet for all. Thank you.